So, Avatar The Way of Water is finally out after 13 years of waiting, and if you want to know whether or not this return to Pandora is worth the cost of an IMAX ticket, well let's get into it. Hello friends and welcome back to the Brock Upside, a place to live, talk and buy movies. And real quick, if you guys have seen this movie, go ahead and comment down below your experience checking out The Way of Water. Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Did you check it out in a really cool format other than the one we're going to talk about today? But for everybody else here watching this video, this is going to be a spoiler-free review talking about the movie and the overall viewing experience in an IMAX theater. But without further ado, let's start talking about the movie. Now, I'm definitely going to sound like a broken record at this point because my thoughts are very much similar similar to everybody else's who's already seen this movie, in that Avatar The Way of Water completely redefines what an immersive theatrical experience is. I've seen this movie twice already, and both times I just completely forgot that I was sitting in a movie theater watching a movie. That once again, by the time the credits rolled, I was like, Snap back to reality! But how, damn it? Well, I'll tell you how. It's because the movie has some of the most incredible CGI I have ever seen in my entire life, completely blowing the first movie's CGI out of the water, no pun intended. Yeah, it's definitely no wonder why it took 13 years for an Avatar sequel to get made, just by even looking at the poster there, just analyzing every pore on Jake Sully's face to the incredible water simulations. I just kept staring at the screen like, how is this even fake? And just like the first movie, the 3D is used perfectly to suck you into the world of Pandora. And you really get the feeling that most general audiences have totally forgotten what a 3D movie is like because several audience members in my Thursday night showing were like grasping at the screen for the first like five to ten minutes. Like, what do you mean it's not actually coming out of the screen? That's crazy talk. I think the 3D and the VFX work the absolute best when we're finally introduced to new parts of Pandora, when we go to the reef people, get into the tropical islands and the oceans of it all because we've seen the forest side of Pandora in great detail from the first movie so it feels kind of familiar but once we get to the tropical side of things that's when it really starts to shine. Story-wise however it's nothing groundbreaking. If you've ever seen a movie about a family moving to a new town and everybody doesn't really accept them at first they gotta prove themselves you're gonna find a lot of familiar story beats in this movie. I think the big takeaway is that this movie is incredibly dependent on you getting attached to these characters and this world that you just want to be sucked right into it. Which is why I think the first movie worked so incredibly well. Not just from a visual standpoint, but because of the Navi culture and the environments of Pandora. You want to learn more. You want to be on this planet and you don't want to leave. So I think the movie overall does that a lot better this time than the first one because here at least you're you're more established with the world and the characters and the rules of this universe so this time you just kind of get to be along for the ride and just take in the beauty of it all which i think works very well plus also it's three hours and ten minutes which doesn't feel like three hours to be perfectly honest and it's of course trying to set up more sequels which we are probably going to be getting whether you like it or not but for everybody else that's wondering what about the 3D experience, more specifically the IMAX 3D experience. Well, for the 7% of you on this poll I posted, don't worry, I got you. Now step one in discussing any movie released in IMAX is whether or not the movie was actually shot with IMAX cameras or not. And in the case of Avatar The Way of Water, no. However, the movie was filmed with Sony Cinealta cameras, which are on a very short list of cameras approved for IMAX screens. This is a relatively common occurrence considering that 70mm IMAX film cameras are extremely bulky, highly expensive, and are usually only reserved for the big boys like Christopher Nolan. And not to get too off topic, but the camera rigs they use to film this movie with the motion capture, the underwater motion capture, is absolutely insane. If you want to learn more about that, I highly recommend you check out this video by Frame Voyager up here. But not until this video is over, alright? I'll know if you leave. So the movie still does take full advantage of the IMAX screen, filling in every square inch of that screen. There are no varying aspect ratios going on in this movie. That, coupled with the 3D, just makes the IMAX screen feel more like a window into another world, which is kind of the point. Speaking of the 3D, the cameras were rigged with special stereoscopic 3D beams, which is just cool people talk for saying it was shot 
in 3D, hence it was actually designed to be seen in 3D, and it shows perfectly as the IMAX 3D gives natural depth to everything like you were actually in the room with these characters. There were a couple of imperfections with the overall 3D, but it's just little stuff like text on the screen seeming a little double vision-esque here and there, but those are definitely not what you've come to an IMAX 3D movie for. But one very important thing to keep in mind is that Avatar The Way of Water was filmed with varying frame rates, as in some of the sequences were shot at 48 frames per second, while the rest of it was shot in a more traditional 24 frames per second. So certain sequences are going to look incredibly smooth like a high quality PS5 game, or like those TVs on display at Costco with the auto motion smoothing garbage turned on. The big downside to this is that, well, projectors are not going to switch between the 48 and the 24, so the 48 frame stuff is going to look incredibly smooth, while the 24 frames per second stuff is going to appear a little bit choppy. Now I mentioned that because I think it is important, however I don't think everybody is going to notice that. In fact I've seen some people online saying oh I didn't even know there were varying frames, so it's going to depend on what format you see the movie in. Speaking of which, I saw this movie in both IMAX 3D last night and in Dolby 3D Tuesday night for a special advanced screening. Both experiences were fantastic, but there were a few notable differences in there, so for those of you that are curious, we'll be talking about that in a separate video. So overall, Avatar The Way of Water fully delivers on what you'd expect, an incredibly immersive theatrical return to Pandora, elevating the insane technology from the first movie, and proving once again that James Cameron is an unstoppable force of nature. If you're going to see this movie, you definitely need to check it out in the theater at least once. Do yourself a favor, go check out the next showing, you won't regret it. My only thing though is I hope this doesn't reignite the trend of, oh, every movie's got to be in 3D because again, a lot of lazy conversions, but if you're going to be like a crazy person like James Cameron and actually, you know, build special cameras to film them in, then go for it. So, for the movie itself, I am gonna give Avatar The Way of Water a gold unboxing machete, and surprise surprise, for the IMAX, I'm going to also give that a gold unboxing machete. So those are my thoughts on Avatar The Way of Water, but if you want to see how the first movie looked in IMAX 3D, I got that video right here. Otherwise, subscribe if you live talking by movies, and we'll see you on the bracket side.